Okay, so we'll review uh, Buckley Leverett theory that we talked about last time. This is a the sort of one multi-phase case where we can come up with an analytic or semi-analytic solution, and that's useful to us as numerical simulator developers because it gives us a verification problem to compare our results to. So in the Buckley-Levitt problem, we only have two phases, oil and water. We assume 1D flow, incompressible fluids and rock, no capillary pressure and gravity, no sources or sinks. And the boundary conditions are that, uh, again, it's 1D, so we can think of it like a core, a core flood. Um, so the core is initially saturated with water that's in residual water saturation. And we're going to inject at a constant rate. We're going to inject water at a constant rate, Q. And we're going to produce water and oil at a constant rate, Q. And this is the solution we expect. So from some initial water saturation, sort of an exponential decay down to a shock front to the residual water saturation. And this is at a snapshot in time, right? So this is saturation versus di distance. This is at one time, right? So in, in early time, it would be here. In late time, it would be here, right? So as it moves across. And when we actually hear in a couple of lectures, uh, once we talk about the impest method for solving the equations via finite differences in, the, in, the, you know, in a simulator, then uh, we'll come back to this problem and I'll actually show you uh, a numerical time-dependent solution of this problem compared to the, re uh, compared to the reservoir simulator. Uh, so that's what we're looking for, something that looks like that. We start with a uh, mass balance equation for water. There's no sources or sinks. Since the porosity and perme I'm sorry, since the porosity and density are constant, uh, we can pull these guys outside the derivatives. Then the BWs cancel and we get this equation. We then assume uh, that the, f the, the flow rate of water can be written as the total flow rate times the fractional flow, right? The fractional flow is the, the percentage of total flow that is water, right? And so we write that. And with that, then we plug this guy back into the mass balance equation, and we get this guy. Then we just use the chain rule since we know that the, fr the uh, fractional flow is a function of water saturation. We use the chain rule and we get this term, this term here. Then because the water saturation is a function of S, X, and T, so that is that the water saturation is a function of X and T, then we look at a differential change in the water saturation and we get this guy. And at you know at the velocity front, there's a constant saturation, so this is zero. And we can solve this equation. And when we solve this equation, we get this guy. Right? And then uh, by also solving this equation for a term that looks like this. Then we can see that what you get is that on the other side. Therefore, the velocity front via these two equations, the velocity front dx dt at a constant water saturation. So because we made the assumption here that we're looking for a constant water saturation, right, then this, this notation means you know, this is the velocity front of constant water saturation. So that sort of bar has to be carried around over here. So we get this. The, the, uh, the velocity of constant saturation is proportional to the derivative of the fractional flow. Okay. 
Then we introduce some dimensionless variables. Dimensionless distance is the distance divided by the total core length. And dimensionless time is the total volume injected over the pore volume of the core. And if we plug in those dimensionless quantities, we get this really simple equation that we can integrate with the understanding that, with the boundary condition that at time t equals 0, x equals to 0. So x is the position of the constant saturation front. That's 0 at time t equals 0. So then our fractional flow curve is a function of the water saturation through the relative permeabilities. So we have these rel relative permeability curves. And when we plug the into the fractional flow equation, right, uh, just, well, when we plug Darcy's law into the fractional flow equation, because there's no capillary pressure, the pressure of the water and the pressure of the oil are equal, which means the pressure gradient of the water and the pressure gradient of the oil are equal. So those terms cancel in the numerator and the denominator. Uh, likewise, the areas cancel in the numerator and denominator. And you're left with just this function of the, the uh, relative permeabilities and the viscosities of the two fluids. And from that, we can create a fractional flow curve as a function of water saturation. And of course, we want what we need is actually the derivative of that guy, the derivative. And so, again, I had him a little side last time, and I said, you know, this is, these curves come from discrete data, right? So when you plug that into this, you have a curve that's a function of discrete data, and you don't want to just differentiate it with finite differences. You want to use, um, you know, some, you want to basically interpolate a polynomial and then differentiate the polynomial at the point. So, uh, by the way, when I think, you know, when, when you use the numerical differentiation operators in MATLAB, like diff, that's what it's doing. So it's, it's not just finite differences. It's interpolating the polynomial and computing the derivative that way. OK? So just the steps for generating the saturation profile are then to choose a time and compute a dimensionless distance, right? create the fractional flow curve, compute the derivative of the fractional flow curve. And then now that you know the, the derivative of the fractional flow curve and the dimensionless time, then you can compute x for a given saturate water saturation. So you sweep through all water saturations from, from the beginning down to um, the residual saturation, computing x every time, right? and you produce a profile. And that profile would look something like this. But one of these, of course, is non-physical solution. And so we want to get rid of those. And so what we're looking for now is xdf, which is the x position, uh, the dimensionless distance x position of the of the constant saturation front, or the shock front. And so what we do now is then write a mass balance across the shock front. And so if we do that, we essentially get this equation. Uh, that after then some algebra, we have this equation. And so then we have two equations that must be equal, essentially. These two equations must be equal to one another. So then comparing the left-hand sides of these two equations, we can come up with this equation, which suggests a secant line can be drawn to determine the saturation of the front. Right? So from the initial saturation to the tangent point and to the inflection point of the fractional flow curve, that is the saturation of the, uh, of the front. And now that you know that, you can essentially Basically, now that you know, so the, the real step for generating the profile 
is to not generate the whole profile, but only generate it from the water saturation to the water saturation front. Because at the water saturation front, you know it becomes a step change down to the initial saturation. And when you do that for a given time, you get a profile that looks like that. So if you want to animate this, if you want to see this front move in time, you, you have to select a time, go through the whole process, select another time, go through the whole process, select another time, go through the whole process. And you can, you know, if you do that for small enough time steps, you can essentially then create an animation where you'll see this front move across the floor. And, and I'll, I'll show you that in a couple lectures. I'll show you that. I'll show you the actual Buckley lever solution compared to the numerical solution of the PVEs. Did you guys in, in Res 2, did y'all compute some profiles? Yeah. Okay, so uh, 